casual here. Top 3 far power builds are, let's be frank, pretty awesome when they work. Big damage, massive crits, what isn't there to like? Well, dying a lot I guess. Because far power builds are often glass cannon builds and so killing enemies before they can get to you is the name of the game. I'm not that good so I'm always looking for builds that have solid survivability as well as damage output. This is my take on a far power build, one that you can run CT15 golds on and that will keep you alive. If you want a pure far power build then I would recommend Yoda of Soda or Rounded Tic Tac who have put out some great devastated build guides. Keep it up chaps. Let's get into the build. The core of this build is health regeneration, which when coupled with the right skills, abilities and mods delivers both strong damage and strong survivability. Picking up additional max health and health regeneration from the middle tree has a number of big benefits. The obvious one is that I'm hard to kill with 39,000 health and regenerating around 1,200 health per second. This also delivers 30% weapon damage through the Vim and Vigor ability and another 30% through the mod The Cycle. Most firepower builds spec to the old to pick up altered charge and it's 70% weapon damage buff for 10 seconds. My build gives me 60% extra weapon damage all the time. But why stop there? This build uses the tremor skill and with the mod human fortress I get another 1290 health regeneration which in turn adds another 33% weapon damage. So 93% additional weapon damage while tremor is active. To extend this I've also modded crush sequence which keeps tremor up for around 11 seconds. So 93% additional weapon damage for 11 seconds compared to 70% for only 10 seconds. Not bad at all, but of course I do lose some abilities by specking into the middle tree. Confrontation and dry them out are not a big loss given my health and health regeneration. Missing out on Bounty Hunter and Armor Breaker will have a negative impact on our damage, but I think it's worth it for the added survivability. Speaking of which, I've taken Into the Fray which provides 15% damage mitigation for 10 seconds after a kinetic skill ends. This can be a real lifesaver when used at the right time. The rest of the class tree is pretty standard, focusing on Assault Weapons through Assault Master and Assault Adept. For this build, Golem is essential, providing me with massive survivability. Modding Golem of Death and Perseverance helps me keep this up for long periods of time, quite often the entire section of an expedition. Golem and Tremor also activate the three set bonus of the statue gear set, which boosts my firepower by 100%. You can see here the impact of this when I pop Golem, increasing my firepower to 464,000 and my weapon damage bonus to 419%. This goes up to 546,000 firepower and over 500% weapon damage bonus when you trigger Tremor. The gear set bonus also buffs the entire team's weapon skill leech by 100%. That is a nice boost to survivability for the entire team, assuming that they have weapon life leech on their guns. Sadly doubling zero is still zero otherwise. The final skill that I'm taking is Endless Mass which triggers the damage mitigation from Into the Fray, but it is also great at grouping up enemies and applying bleed. This links in nicely to the mods I'm using so let's have a look at them now. Before any of you say anything, Yes, I know I'm wearing dinosaur feet in this build. A death dealing reanimating god in fluffy slippers. Hey, Devastators have a sensitive side as well you know. Bleed is an important part of this build. In addition to the bleed application through Endless Mass, I'm using Bleeding Impulse to add a bleed effect to Golem, which should be up most of the time. Tainted Blood increases the damage that I do against enemies afflicted with bleed, which should be all of them, and Vampiric Mag helps to keep our ammo full. This is actually very important as both guns I'm using draw off the same ammo pool, even though they are different weapon types, so managing your ammo is important. I am running two other damage dealing mods, Captain Hunter and Personal Space. The latter is not essential to the build and you could certainly go with Stare Into the Barrel, Sharp Eye, Bloodlust, Bloody Boost, Crit Stack and so on. All would work just as well if you get the right gear roll. In terms of stats, the three that you should be focusing on are Bonus Firepower, Cooldown Reduction and Close Range Damage. Once you get your rotation right, you shouldn't have any problem with survivability, but if you are, you could add some healing stats to your armor. In group play, you may want to use the chest piece from the Statue Gear Set for the Power Stones mod, which buffs your team's weapon damage by 40% when you trigger Tremor, albeit this will reduce your own damage output as it will take up a damage mod slot. For my main weapon I'm using Facial Symbiont, a submachine gun that comes with Dark Sacrifice which currently is the best damage dealing mod in the game. The great thing about this build is that your health regeneration completely negates the health drain that this mod causes, so I get all of the upside from it, but none of the downside. I have added Ultimate Damage Link to this gun. 
For other classes this mod is a little lacklustre, but for Firepower Devastators it is an absolute monster, because all of your damage is coming from pure weapon damage rather than a rounds based skill. What I have found with this mod is that you do more damage to enemies that you aren't shooting, which isn't what the tooltip suggests. You can quite easily take down elites by targeting the smaller enemies around them and never shooting them at all. With these two mods taking down groups of enemies is an absolute breeze. For my secondary weapon I'm using Air to the Desert which comes as Sandstorm and I have added Death Chains to this. Quickly swapping to this weapon and hitting an elite with one shot is a very quick way to deliver more than 400,000 damage. Finally I am using the legendary pistols Torment and Agony with the mods Moaning Winds and Clip Combustion both of which do damage on reload. Empty the gun and then when you swap to it you have a great AoE bomb which does nearly half a million damage. I have covered how to get this to work every time in the build guide on screen now. This build has a very distinct rotation that you can develop and get better at over time allowing you to be more aggressive with it. I typically start most fights by popping golem which provides me with enough survivability for pretty much any fight and triggers my gear set weapon damage bonus. Once this runs out I pop tremor to reactivate my gear set bonus plus the extra weapon damage from the cycle mod as well as buffing my physical damage reduction to 73% and health regeneration to 2500 per second. Tremor will run out out about 5 seconds before golem is available again, so use the damage mitigation from endless mass along with your basic health regen and skill leech to keep you alive and so on. With Golem of Death though, Golem can be active for most of an encounter as long as you can keep killing enemies. This then allows you to use Endless Mass to group enemies and use Ultimate Damage Link and burn them down, knowing that it will be back up again when you need it. You can also pop Tremor during the Golem phase for its additional weapon damage buff, health regeneration, explosion damage and interrupt as long as you can keep Golem up through its cooldown. This build really excels where there are groups of enemies that you can lay into. Archways and Scorched Land and CT15s were very easy with this build. Initially I was running it with Gravity Leap which gave me great manoeuvrability around the map, but I found that using Enlop Mass to pull enemies to one spot was just so much better. This build is a lot of fun to play and I'm using it as my main for Devastator going forward. Until next time, casual out.